afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, this is Mr. Hill, and I'm here for your kind of second installment of the uh, Pi game tutorials. So if you remember last time, I'm just going to run this program. Uh, where we ended up, uh, it was just creating, uh, creating some text, you know, defining our screen, and um, uh, and placing the text somewhere on the screen. Now, one of the things I asked you to kind of experiment was, you know, was was playing around with maybe some of your x, y values. So you notice that, uh, you know, as x changes, you know, if I if I you know I remember what that we're working with the boundaries between 800 and 600, 800 for x and 600 for y. So if I if I do something like say split the difference here at 400 and uh, and 300. You know, you notice that I can, um, I can start moving, right? I can start moving my my hello world around the screen, okay? And um, and and you know, there's a, a nice beginning to, you know, being able to control objects um, in your games, okay? Using x and y coordinates, okay? So the 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 next step is here. I'm gonna reset these conditions back to zero, and. Um, and so, um, uh, let's let's look at how we can kind of introduce some movement here. Okay, so when I run this now, my first position will be um, at the top uh, the top left corner. There's my zero zero. Okay, so um, what I'd like to do is I'm going to introduce um, uh, uh, I'm going to introduce uh, something called the clock. Okay, so underneath my x and y, um, I'm going to call this a clock. And in Pi game, there is a um, a clock. So um, I'm gonna go clock. Sorry, Pi game. Dot time. It's part of the time library, and uh, and we're gonna have we're gonna define our clock. Okay. So now that we have a clock, right? We can um, we can we can make a tick. Okay. So in our while loop, I'm going to. Um, uh, I'm going to uh, play with the uh, timing a little bit, okay? And, and this has to do with how many times it updates, um, uh, how often the, the frames update per second and, and, and all that stuff. So um, for now, I'm not going to get too deep into that, but know that you can play with the, that time. So uh, clock.tick, and um, let's go 40, right? 40 times. And... Um, uh, the last thing I want to do, um, I'm going to set my background color, okay? And so one of the things that as we start to develop more and more, um, um, as we start to include more and more objects on our screen, um, having a set background color is really, really important. So remember what we did here is we defined... Um, uh, you know, 255, 255, 255 is our background color. You notice it was white, right? And the foreground color was this kind of cyan looking purpley color. <coughs> and, um, 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 but if I want to set my background as black, I can do a screen dot blit. Okay, and this is going to be a nice, uh, a nice uh, dot fill. Screen dot, oh, sorry, screen dot fill. And I'm gonna fill it with the color black. So remember your brackets here, we're filling it with a color, so the parameter has to be an RGB. So you're gonna have uh, two sets of brackets on the inside, and we're gonna fill it with black. Okay, remember 255 was white, 0000, zero, zero, zero that is black, okay? And, um, and remember I'm blitting at, my, at, at my, my position X and Y, okay? Now, if I want to start to introduce movement, what I want to do is update the, um, you know, the, the X and Y positions as, um, as my clock ticks, okay? My screen refreshes, and I'm, it's like using stop-motion animation to uh, make something look like it's moving. So what I'm going to do here is do a simple X uh, plus equals 5, and I'm going to update that position at uh, 5 every time uh, every time the clock ticks, okay? And so uh, let's just stop this and we're gonna run it and see what happens. Okay, so now I got a white background. Oh, and you see, no, I got a black background and you see my hello world moving across the screen. 
Now if I want to slow that down, I can do one. I'm going to change that to one. Okay, let's stop and run again. Okay, we're going to slow it down a little bit. Okay. Now you see that that's moving. Right, I'm going to speed it up again. Five. And, and, and what happens is it, it just disappears, okay? And so one of the things that we wanna, we wanna play with, well, actually before we get into the idea of keeping our images on the screen, um, let's play around with some of these coordinates a little bit, you know? Um, you know that just like I can move something horizontally uh, by increasing X, um, I can also, um, you know, I can also change my Y. So say if I wanted to move something down, I could just move uh, change my y coordinates by five every time and so there I've changed my y and you can see I'm moving down You know if I want to move something in a more kind of complex uh, 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 Direction I could I could move something diagonally and so that would involve updating my x and my y Okay, and I'm just gonna go x and y and We'll see what happens Okay, and you start to see, um, you know, being able to move things in, in different positions. Okay, also know that, you know, by changing your starting position, say I wanted to change this to 100 and, um, uh, and 400, and that's also going to affect, affect the movement. Right, so you can kind of play with all these things.